When my four-year-old niece comes over to visit, she quite often likes to do some drawing on the computer. And recently she did a really nice uh, abstract painting, which we ended up printing out for her, uh, and it looked really good. And that got me thinking a little bit about doing some more digital abstract work. Uh, most of the stuff that I do tends to be figurative or a little bit of landscape. Uh, but I do occasionally do uh, some abstract work and I've done traditional abstract work very occasionally as well. Uh, recently I was uh, very pleased to, to be selected as one of the winners in a competition that Escape Motions had been running to do some uh, YouTube videos for them. And when I heard that they were going to run another competition to encourage people to do some videos uh, and one of the topics was mixed media, then I thought this might be a, a really good opportunity to bring those two together, pull together a little bit of a demonstration and to see if we can do uh, an abstract piece uh, using digital mixed media techniques. So let's have a look at what we can do. My name's Pete. Welcome to Basement Picasso. So before I start the painting today, I wanted to just show you a couple of things that I've done to get things set up. You can see a test piece that I produced uh, a little bit earlier. And what I was doing while I was doing that was testing out brushes and combinations that I wanted to use for this particular painting. So for each of the brush categories, I've gone through and picked a few specific brushes that I think will generally work quite well. So I'm going to use a few uh, different oil brushes. Most of these are ones that I've made myself. I'll use some watercolour brushes. Most of these will just be the default brushes that come with Rebel. I'll probably use uh, some inks and I've made two uh, ink brushes specifically for this today. Uh, potentially use some of my custom pencil brushes. I uh, found an interesting um, marker brush that I'll be able to use that brings out some canvas texture. Uh, and then I've got a couple of things that I'll use from the default airbrushes and uh, potentially a couple of custom brushes for those as well. The canvas I'm going to use today is a 16 by 9 format, but it, it's vertical. Uh, if we have a look at the size, you'll see it's 1350 pixels by 2400, which is a, a 16 by 9 ratio so that's what I'm going to use today and what I'm planning on doing is actually doing a diptych so two paintings two separate paintings that sort of sit alongside each other so I'll do the first abstract painting get it to a certain point uh, and we'll save that and then once I've got that I'll be able to bring it in as a reference picture and then we'll put that alongside it and then we'll continue working on the second painting uh, and then hopefully we'll end up with two paintings that sit next to each other and uh, work well together. So that's the plan for the painting and then the last thing that I've got set up is uh, we've got the um, visual settings and the tilt because we'll be using some of the wet media and you'll see how some of the colours run so I'll keep those settings open so you can see uh, what values I'm using and how those are working. Um, and then the last thing is I've made pre-made a new colour set and one of the things I've been uh, using to come up with colour palettes uh, is a website called Coolers and it's a very nice simple interface to be able to pull together colour palette, uh, to be able to test out different combinations, to adjust some of the colours, to come up with random variations um, and just a really good way to pull together the, the sort of colour palette that might be of interest. Um, you can use it for free 
Uh, there is also a paid um, subscription if you want to take advantage of some of the more premium features. Um, but I've been able to pull together some initial colour palettes just using the, the free version. So very good website and, uh, and worth checking out. So that is what we've set up so far today. So uh, that was the original one. I'm going to hide that. We're just going to start with a blank canvas and we're going to get down to doing some painting. So to begin with, what I'm thinking about is really just texture rather than um, any particular shapes or any specific colours. Um, and one of the things I want to try and do with this is to get a physical texture down to then help with some of the uh, wet media and the watercolours once, once they start going on. Um, so at the moment, uh, I'm not worried too much about trying to make uh, colour combinations or anything, it's really just about starting to get some interesting textures and, and marks down. So because I'm working with thicker and pastel paint and trying to get the, the colours to kind of run and interact with the texture, uh, one of the things that you'll notice is when I'm using the watercolour settings, uh, I need to make sure that the, the re-wet is set to zero. Uh, and what that means is the colours will flow without wetting the, the colours and the paint that's underneath. Um, if you don't do that, if you have that set to another value, then uh, what will tend to happen is the, the colours will run, but it also picks up the thickness of the paint and effectively re-wets the thickness and then starts to, to flow that thickness down. Um, and uh, that can actually end up giving you some, some really nice, interesting patterns and textures uh, in its own right. Uh, in general, that's not what I'm looking for, but every so often it, it's good just to try something out and experiment and see uh, what you get, because part of the, the advantage of these sorts of tools and techniques are they, they do introduce a lot of randomness that you, you might not otherwise have uh, gotten um, just by the, the way you were trying to work.
so at this point I've had a chance to look at the the painting and there's a couple of things about the colours that I'm not particularly happy with and the just the, the way that these uh, five colours are sort of working together. So what I'm going to do for a, a couple of minutes is just experiment with the mixing palette uh, to use some of the colours and then to uh, potentially change uh, a couple of them and see if we can get a set of colours that I think uh, work more effectively. So the blue and the light green I think are, are good. Uh, the slightly darker green, the olive green, uh, I think I'm going to try and make a bit more uh, into a brown and then I want to, to try and work with the, the lighter colours to, to try and find something that uh, sits more effectively. So I'm thinking a, a, a brighter red um, and then something else. So uh, what we'll do is uh, I'll just fill in the whole mixer palette first just so I can see all the, the colours and they're not kind of getting distracted by the white and then the green I think I'm quite happy with uh, as a colour. Th those two are working well together. The olive green I think I want to, to try and make uh, a bit more of a brown. I want to keep that reasonably neutral, maybe slightly stronger than that. I think I'm a bit happier with those and what I want to do is just uh, blend some of those two together slightly just to see how that as a colour palette is generally going to work.
So at this point, uh, I think I'm a little bit happier with the colour combinations. Uh, first thing I want to do is just bring out a little bit of contrast and colour. So I'm going to use the filter and just do a bit of brightness and contrast. brings out the colour and brings out depth uh, a little bit more, which is good. Uh, I think I'm heading towards being happy with this. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit more work and what I want to do is just um, knock back some of the blue in the sort of bottom half of the picture, make that a little bit more sort of dark brown and um, maybe just emphasise this kind of circle just so that it kind of balances against this circle uh, at the top. Um, and what I'm going to try and do is uh, hopefully not overwork it too much uh, and sort of try and do anything sort of too dramatic. So that's what I'll spend a little bit of time doing now. So to finish up, I've put together the two paintings uh, as a simulated digital diptych, the two paintings sitting next to each other. Hopefully that gives you a really good idea of the sort of things you can do with the digital multimedia. We've used oil paints, we've used uh, watercolours, inks, markers, airbrushes, pencils, 
uh, all working together and all helping to produce texture and uh, shapes and colours. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Um, please do consider uh, subscribing. And uh, if you've got any thoughts or comments, I'd love to hear them. Please uh, leave them below. If there's anything you'd like me to uh, be thinking about doing, um, do uh, let me know and give me some suggestions for videos that I can do for you for the future. Um, otherwise, for just now, thank you very much for listening and hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.